Last Thursday, Nikki Chewbacca, President Trump was convicted on 34 counts of interfering with the 2016 election. So we want to break down for our audience the top five takeaways of this trial for you in case you haven't been following it. Number one, this trial hinges solely on the testimony of Trump's former attorney, Michael Cohen. It's the only evidence that they have for these counts. This guy is a serial perjurer, a liar, and a thief. He's lied to the Senate. He's lied to the House. He's lied to federal judges. He's lied to state judges. He's lied to his own attorney. He's lied to his family. And then he stole from the Trump organization because he was angry and mad. He's got an ax to grind with President Trump because he was pissed off that he didn't get appointed to the Trump administration in 2016. And that anger and bitterness has been driving him ever since. And he probably didn't get appointed because he's got some serious credibility issues. So this case rests on the single phone call that Michael Cohen made to allegedly to President Trump, but actually the defense said and proved that this was based on a text message he sent to Trump's bodyguard saying, I'm getting these prank phone calls, I need to talk to you about it. Bodyguard says, call me, the call happens, that's less than 90 seconds. Therefore they showed, that's like the amount of time it takes to leave a voicemail, there's no way the phone could have been passed to President Trump. You could have explained that Stormy Daniels was threatening to go public and ruin his reputation on some made up claim and gotten his approval for some big hush money payout. And that was the entire case. So now Trump is facing over 100 years in prison solely based on the word of this Michael Cohen. Remember, the standard in a criminal case is beyond a reasonable doubt. And it seems like there's a lot of doubt left here of whether this actually happened. Yeah, I mean, a lot of doubt is is an understatement, I think. That was generous on your part. Uh, the judge has also fined Trump multiple times and threatened criminal punishment if he criticized witnesses or the judicial process or what was happening in the courtroom. That was a blatant and brazen violation of President Trump's First Amendment rights. I mean, imagine that. Fining him for exercising a constitutional right. And the first of our constitutional rights, the foundation to our constitutional rights, right? The right to free speech. And on top of that, to make things worse, the judge also put Trump and his team, not only putting them under a gag order, uh, he let the prosecution and their team say whatever they wanted. And their witnesses say whatever they wanted. Michael Cohen was on TikTok, on cable news TV, saying whatever he wanted. The whole point was to tip the scales and silence Trump. There was no credible, in my opinion, uh, no credible, justifiable reason, much less a legal reason, uh, for Trump's First Amendment rights to have been curtailed and violated in that way. I think that's going to be an appealable issue in this case. So not only did they throw out the Constitution, but it also seems like our entire American judicial system has been deeply eroded by what just happened. There was never any plausible evidence that Trump actually committed these crimes and no legal basis for the DA's indictment. In fact, the Justice Department under Joe Biden passed on this case a while ago because it said there's no case here. So the integrity of our judicial system has been absolutely threatened and undermined by what Biden and Bragg and their team have done in this reckless zeal to destroy Trump and try and manipulate the outcome of this 2024 election. Biden and Bragg have unleashed an absolutely horrendous abuse of power through the judicial and the executive branches. They've established a new norm here. Here we've got this case of prosecuting your political opponents, even if the charges are baseless, and then we'll see if they get overturned on appeal. But in the meantime, you get the result you want. So if you can't beat your opponent at the ballot box, you can just try and beat them at the jury box. And at least through the delayed court system, you get the outcome that you want. It's appalling. And it poses a grave danger to our democratic norms. Yeah, it, re it really is dangerous. I mean, the left uh, with Biden at the helm is quickly transforming our nation from being a shining city on a hill to a smoldering city in ruins. Uh, none of us wants to live in a country where political prosecution, or should we, I mean, really more appropriately said persecution, uh, becomes as normal as, as, as eggs for breakfast, right? Like, it becomes the norm. None of us wants to get used to living in that kind of a uh, post-democracy post society. Uh, fortunately, and here's the good news, uh, 
we can still reverse course. I don't know how much longer we have. Um, it's, we, we don't have a infinite running lane here to recross this Rubicon that we've crossed, but we can still reverse course in November. We, the people, run this country, not some DA in New York City or you know a judge in New York City, all of whom were biased, uh, clearly biased uh, against uh, Trump. This was totally, and pun intended here, a trumped up charge. Uh, we have an opportunity uh, to take a stand for freedom and justice at the ballot box in November. And here in Alaska, we're going to be taking the last stand for freedom at the ballot box come November. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. There is a great opportunity for government by the people to really come out strong here and say, we don't agree with this. As, to, to your point number four, this was a horrific case of forum shopping. We're going to throw all of these cases, all these indictments, all these charges at Trump. We're just going to see what sticks. And you know, it really hasn't stuck across the U.S., but this one happened to stick. It is unlikely to stick through the appeal process. And People are saying at this point it'll take longer than the election to see the outcome of that appeal. And in the meantime, we're going to have an election and America gets to decide what the outcome is. But forum shopping until you get to persecute your political opponent the way that you want is not how our country is founded. And it is not what the check and balance uh, system of the three branches of government was intended for. Mm -hmm. And so that is uh, what we the people get to be the ultimate check and balance on our system of government, on the establishment. That's what the vote of the people is. And so that takes us to number five. It is so critical in this time where we have heated passion and so many people trying to divide us that people who support President Trump, and I would say people who support a way forward in America that is calm and peaceful, that we actually stay calm and get involved in positive ways. I even see now in this week that has passed a lot of effort by the media to try and stoke the fire and make it seem like things are worse than it is. Oh, Trump is doing horribly. Oh, the polls are so bad. Oh, he's lost support when in fact, and we'll talk about this in a little bit, he's actually leading in the polls in all the swing states. He's doing great in his election and he's leading in fundraising. So the the message and the narrative is there and designed to get people upset and to get us mad. And in fact, what we need to do is get involved in the positive ways that are actually within how the system works. Donate, volunteer, campaign, and especially vote. Mm -hmm. There are so many people who choose to stay voiceless because they won't vote. Your vote is your voice. So we can stop the spread of injustice and corruption that we're seeing simply by getting involved. To paraphrase what Benjamin Franklin said, we still have a republic if we can keep it. Yeah, I really, I really uh, think that's that's a wonderful way to put it. That that we still have a a way to turn all this around, and we still have lots of things that that we can do. Uh, we need to remember that, like I said earlier, there there are a lot of appealable issues in this case, and this case will get overturned eventually. The problem is, it's most likely going to get overturned uh, if you have to go through the state court system after this election. Uh, but we can send a resounding message uh, to those who would seek to use the the levers of power to uh, enshrine themselves and ensconce themselves in, uh, in the White House, uh, in positions of power, uh, that that's not how America works. That's not who we are. That's not who we want to be. And we're going to change that because America is to be run by and for we the people.